Welcome back to DLS 105, Risk Tools and Calculations for Risk Assessments. Module 7 is our final module, Semi-Quantitative Risk Assessment and Demonstration of RMC SQRA Calcs. After completing this module, course participants should be able to demonstrate how to calculate and portray the risk for semi-quantitative risk assessments and demonstrate how to use the RMC SQRA Calcs toolbox. This presentation will start with a discussion of semi-quantitative risk assessment calculations and portrayal. We will then go through an overview of the RMC SQRA Calcs toolbox before working through a guided example using the toolbox. Let's start with semi-quantitative risk assessment calculations and portrayal. For SQRAs, order of magnitude estimates are made for the annual probability of failure and average life loss for each potential failure mode. As we will see shortly, the order of magnitude estimates are plotted as boxes on the little fn chart. The total failure probability and average life loss are calculated from the average potential failure mode estimates using the center of the order of magnitude box as a point estimate. SQRA risks are plotted on a life safety risk chart very similar to the little fn plot. The marginal PFM risk and the sum total are plotted as order of magnitude boxes on the chart. The average annual life loss guideline is the same as we discussed in Module 2, such that an average annual life loss of greater than or equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 3 is unacceptable unless there are exceptional circumstances. Levy risk guidelines have evolved to consider the non-breach or background risk. The limits of tolerability are informed by the inherent limitation imposed by the levy's height and non-breach risk. If the incremental risk is at least one order of magnitude less than the background risk, then the risk could be tolerable. So, the average annual life loss must be at least an order of magnitude less than the average annual non-breach life loss, or it must be less than the standard average annual life loss guideline of 1 times 10 to the minus 3 lives per year to be tolerable, absent exceptional circumstances. Non-breach risk is plotted as a reference on this chart, but only for levy SQRAs. Because risk estimates are portrayed and evaluated in logarithmic space, a geometric mean is used to calculate the point estimate at the center of the box. Consider the following example. We are given an APF with an order of magnitude estimate ranging from 1 times 10 to the minus 3 to 1 times 10 to the minus 2. The geometric mean can be calculated by taking the square root of the product of the values that define the range or by using the geomean function in Microsoft Excel. For our example, the geometric mean is 3 times 10 to the minus 3, which is equal to the square root of 1 times 10 to the minus 3 times 1 times 10 to the minus 2. Once we have the geometric means to work with, we can then calculate the total annual probability of failure, average annual life loss, and average incremental life loss. The total APF is calculated by simply summing APF point estimates for all potential failure modes. This assumes that the potential failure modes are mutually exclusive. Similarly, the average annual life loss is calculated by summing the average annual life loss values for all potential failure modes. Lastly, the total average incremental life loss is calculated as the weighted average of the life loss for all potential failure modes by dividing the total average annual life loss by the total annual probability of failure. Next, we have an example to pull everything together. We are given two failure modes, PFM1 and PFM2. To calculate the total APF, we sum the APF geometric means 3.16 times 10 to the minus 3 and 3.16 10 to the minus 4 to get a total of 3.48 times 10 to the minus 3. The total average annual life loss is then equal to the APF times N for PFM1 plus the APF times N for PFM2. So we multiply 3.16 times 10 to the minus 3 by 3.16 and add that to the product of 3.16 times 10 to the minus 4 and 316 
to get 1.1 times 10 to the minus 1. The average life loss is then equal to the average annual life loss divided by the annual probability of failure, which gives us a value of 32. With an annual probability of failure equal to 3.48 times 10 to the minus 3 and an end bar of 32, the total risk is best represented by the bread box, which has an APF range of 1 times 10 to the minus 3 to 1 times 10 to the minus 2, and an average life loss ranging from 10 to 100. For semi-quantitative assessments, the individual risk is also estimated by multiplying the likelihood of the most exposed person or group losing their life by the point estimate for the APF. The resulting individual risk is then plotted as an order of magnitude box. The individual tolerable risk limit is 1 times 10 to the minus 4. If the total APF is less than 1 times 10 to the minus 4 failures per year, the individual risk will also be less than 1 times 10 to the minus 4. As we saw earlier, for levies, tolerability limits are informed by the inherent limitation imposed by the levy height and the non-breach risk. The individual risk must be at least one order of magnitude less than the overtopping frequency or less than the individual tolerable risk limit of 1 times 10 to the minus 4. Non-breach risk is plotted as a reference only for levy SQRAs. This brings us to the first exercise for Module 7. In this exercise, you are asked to use the given potential failure modes and corresponding annual probability of failure and average life loss values to calculate and plot the total APF and average annual life loss, including the individual life safety risk. Please pause the video and take a moment to work through the exercise. When you are finished, press play for the solution. Column D and F provide the APF range, and you are asked to determine the mean in column G. This can be done by either taking the square root of the product of the lower and upper range of the APF, or by using the geo mean function in Excel, where number one is the APF lower and number two is the APF upper. After dragging the formula down, here are the results for the APF means. For column K, you will do the same thing to determine the mean from the average life loss range given in columns H and J. Now that we have calculated all of the mean values, we need to calculate the average annual life loss for each potential failure mode. That is done by multiplying the APF mean by the average life loss mean for each failure mode. Drag the formulas down and you get the value shown here for average annual life loss. Now it's time to calculate the APF total, the average annual life loss total, and then bar. The APF total is the sum of all of the mean values in column G, and the average annual life loss total is the sum of the mean values in column L. The weighted average incremental life loss is equal to the average annual life loss total in H17 divided by the APF total in H16. Using the results from the now completed table, you can plot the individual potential failure modes, the blue boxes, and the total, the red box, on the life safety risk matrix and use the total APF to calculate and plot the individual risk. Note that you can drag and drop the text boxes on the exercise sheet. Here are the results of exercise 7.1. Note that PFM1 plots in the same box as the total. The individual risk probability is calculated by multiplying the APF by the 0.7 given to us from LifeSim, and the result is best represented by the probability range of 1 times 10 to the minus 3 to 1 times 10 to the minus 2.
For levees, we calculate the residual flood inundation in order to make a recommendation for the National Flood Insurance Program accreditation. For NFIP purposes, the AEP of the residual flood inundation is the total annual probability that the levied area will be inundated due to levy breach prior to overtopping, component malfunction or improper operation, or overtopping without breach. To avoid double counting, overtopping with breach is excluded from the calculations. Therefore, the estimated mean annual probability of inundation of the levied area requires combining the APF for all prior to overtopping risk driving potential failure modes with the annual probability of inundation due to overtopping without breach. Based on the results of the risk assessment, the Corps of Engineers will provide an accreditation recommendation for the levy system in the National Flood Insurance Program. If the estimated mean API is greater than 1 times 10 to the minus 2, the Corps will make a recommendation that the levy system is not accredited. If the estimated mean API is less than 1 times 10 to the minus 3, the Corps will make a recommendation that the levy system be accredited subject to any remaining data gaps required by FEMA, for example, interior drainage evaluation. If the estimated mean API is between 1 times 10 to the minus 3 and 1 times 10 to the minus 2, the result will be inconclusive. An inconclusive rating based on API is subject to further evaluation or analysis in order to determine if accreditation can be recommended. This brings us to our second exercise of the session, Levy NFIP. For this exercise, we are using the same PFMs annual probability of failure, and average life loss values from exercise 7.1. The values in columns G, K, and L in exercise 7.2 populate based on the results from the exercise 7.1 spreadsheet. Note that the green highlighted cells contain formulas that pull data from exercise 7.1. In addition, you've been provided the annual probability of inundation due to overtopping without breach. You are asked to calculate the annual probability of failure prior to overtopping, the total mean annual probability of inundation, and to make a recommendation for NFIP accreditation. Please pause the video and take a moment to work through the exercise. When you're finished, press play for the solution. Based on the results of exercise 7.1, you should have the data shown. Note that the potential failure modes now have additional short descriptions to provide you with the additional details for the next calculation. The first step is to calculate the APF for all prior to overtopping risk driving potential failure modes. Remember, for NFIP purposes, the total annual probability that the levied area will be inundated is due to levy breach prior to overtopping and component malfunction or improper operation. To avoid double counting, overtopping with breach is excluded from the calculations. For this calculation, we are using the APF total from exercise 1 and removing the APF for PFM1, overtopping with breach. Next, we calculate the total mean annual probability of inundation, API total, which combines the APF for all prior to overtopping risk driving potential failure modes with the annual probability of inundation due to overtopping without breach. Finally, we use the results of the total mean annual probability of inundation, API total, to make a recommendation for NFIP. Because the API total is between 1 times 10 to the minus 3 and 1 times 10 to the minus 2, the result will be inconclusive and subject to further evaluation or analysis. Now that we understand the calculations behind a semi-quantitative risk assessment and how to portray the results, we can go through the RMC SQRA Calcs toolbox. The current version of the spreadsheet is located on the RMC software website, www.rmc.usace.army.mil/software, 
and can be found under RMC Toolboxes and Risk Calculation Suite. Selecting Risk Calculation Suite will lead you to the page where you can download the RMC SQRA Calcs Toolbox. Now that you have downloaded the RMC SQRA Calcs Toolbox, let's go through an overview to orient you to the spreadsheet. The RMC SQRA Calc spreadsheet contains tools to assess the total incremental risk, non-breach risk for dams, and overtopping incremental and non-breach risk for levees. The total mean annual probability of inundation of the levied area is also assessed for NFIP accreditation recommendation. The RMC SQRA Calc spreadsheet toolbox uses visual basic functions to perform calculations. Therefore, macros must be enabled. A stepwise approach is used for most calculation worksheets in which complex analyses is broken down into smaller computational steps following a logical sequence. Some simpler worksheets will not have these steps. User notes and plot formatting generally appear in the right-hand margin of each calculation worksheet. Some notes appear in a blue or red font for heightened awareness. These notes include instructions for use or additional descriptions. At the bottom of the majority of the worksheets, there is a caution banner to not delete any of the rows below. Those cells contain formulas used in the above tool. Do not add worksheets to this workbook. Unexpected results can unknowingly occur due to formulas that contain reference to other worksheet names. If additional scenarios are required to be evaluated, such as with or without an intervention, make a copy of this workbook. Yellow highlighted cells represent inputs, and green highlighted cells represent existing calculations that can be modified based on available data. All other cells contain formulas. Users should be aware that modifications to any of these formulas could have unintended consequences. The Levy Overtopping Life Safety Risk Tool contains five steps. Step one is to assess the overtopping flood hazard and consequences. The user needs to determine the day and night consequence exposure weights, which correspond to the fraction of time for which a life loss estimate applies. After determining the exposure rates, the user will need to fill in the tables with the available data associated with the overtopping events, depth, AEP, and consequences, using the yellow highlighted cells. This is done for the breach and non-breach conditions. The first overtopping event that should be entered is the incipient overtopping event. The incipient overtopping event is the time at which water will first begin to overtop the levee. Thus, the depth and frequency of the event are associated with the top of levee. The consequences for this event are not shown as an input because the worksheet is set up to use the first overtopping depth that is evaluated because the MMC SOP does not evaluate an incipient overtopping event. And top of levee breach life loss is for breach prior to overtopping with different breach parameters and warning assumptions. If the team were to have developed an incipient overtopping scenario as part of the study, then that data can be used to replace these equations. Following the incipient overtopping data, the worksheet allows five additional overtopping depths to be entered into the table. Once an overtopping depth is entered into column D, the overtopping event name will populate based on the depth entered. The user will need to populate columns D through G for a given event. Once the overtopping events have been entered, the user must populate the incremental flooding limit and or the maximum flood load below the double line. After populating the breach overtopping table, the user should populate the non-breach overtopping table in the same manner. The overtopping depth and corresponding AEP from the breach table are automatically populated in the non-breach table. The incipiating overtopping non-breach life loss is set to zero. Note that if data is not available, then the cell should be left blank. Now that all the data has been entered for step one, the incremental overtopping table is calculated from the breach and non-breach tables. The user then needs to determine if it is reasonable to extrapolate overtopping depth and AEP to where breach and non-breach consequences are equal. A drop-down list is provided in cell C54. The results of step one are shown in a graph and the right margin allow the user to adjust the X and Y axis bounds for display purposes.
Step two is to estimate the system response curve for overtopping with breach. This requires the user to input up to five overtopping depths into the table and the corresponding system response probability. The results of the table are used to generate a chart of system response probability versus overtopping depth. Options in the right margin allow the user to adjust the bound of the X and Y axis for display purposes. Step three estimates the overtopping non-breach and incremental levy risk. The data tables are generated from the data entered in step one and step two. No user input is required for this step. The data tables will be used later in step four. In step four, the worksheet generates the plotting data and the plot for the non-breach risk based on the information entered in the previous step. No user input is required. In step five, the worksheet generates the plotting data and plots for the overtopping incremental risk based on the information entered in the previous steps. The user is only asked to select the reference lines that will be displayed on the risk matrix. The Levy Overtopping Economic Risk Worksheet contains five steps. The worksheet is linked to the Levy Overtopping Life Risk Worksheet and thus has to be completed after that worksheet has been completed. Step one is to assess the overtopping flood hazard and consequences. The user needs to enter the breach and non-breach economic cost that correspond to the overtopping events and AEPs entered in the Levy Overtopping Life Risk Worksheet. As with the Levy Overtopping Life Risk Worksheet, the breach economic costs for the incipient overtopping event are not shown as an input because the worksheet is set up to use the first overtopping depth. If the team were to have developed an incipient overtopping scenario as part of the study, then that data can be used to replace the equations in the green highlighted cell. Note that if data is not available, then cells should be left blank. Once all the data has been entered for step one, the incremental cost table is generated from the breach and non-breach tables above. The user then needs to determine if it is reasonable to extrapolate overtopping depth and AEP to where breach and non-breach consequences are equal. A drop-down list is provided in cell C52. The results of step one are shown in a graph and the right margin allows the user to adjust the bound of the X and Y axis for display purposes. In step two, the estimated system response curve for overtopping with breach is populated directly from the levy overtopping life risk worksheet. Step three estimates the overtopping non-breach and incremental levy risk based on the data entered in step one and step two. No user input is required for either of these steps. In step four, the worksheet generates the plotting data and the plot for non-breach economic risk based on the information entered in the previous steps. No user input is required. In step five, the worksheet generates the plotting data and plot for the overtopping incremental risk based on the information entered in the previous steps. The user is only asked to select the reference lines that will be displayed on the risk matrix. The chart allows for two options, all or none. This is the last step of the levy overtopping economic tool. The total incremental life safety risk for levies worksheet is used to develop the incremental risk matrix and total risk for the structure. Prior to entering data into the table, the user is asked to define if overtopping with breach is non-credible. Cell L12 contains a yes or no drop-down menu. If no is selected, then A16 through H16 will use the annual probability of failure and average life loss information calculated in the levy overtopping life risk worksheet. If yes is selected, then the annual probability of failure and average life loss will be set to zero. Once the overtopping scenario has been chosen, the user can complete the potential failure modes table. The user will enter a PFM description in columns A and B, the annual probability of failure range in columns C and D, and the average life loss in columns F and G. As with exercise 7.1, the worksheet will calculate the geometric mean of the range to determine point estimates.
The potential failure modes are then summed by the geometric means to determine the total annual probability of failure and the total average incremental life loss. The APF and average annual life loss totals are used to calculate the weighted average incremental life loss, and bar. The final step of the worksheet is to develop the total incremental life safety risk for the reporting and plotting of the results. The worksheet uses the values calculated for the APF total and N bar from the previous step in a visual basic function to calculate the centroid and then the range. The mean values from above are used to calculate the average annual life loss. A chart is generated showing the geometric mean of the potential failure modes, the non-breach risk, and order of magnitude total incremental risk. The chart allows for five options report, all, traditional, controlling, and none to add reference lines from a dropdown in cell C41. The total incremental economic risk for levies worksheet is used to develop the incremental economic risk matrix and total economic risk for the structure. The worksheet is linked to the total incremental life safety risk for levies worksheet and thus has to be completed after completing that worksheet. The user will enter the average economic cost range that corresponds to the failure modes entered in the total incremental life safety risk for levies worksheet. The worksheet will calculate the geometric mean of the range to determine point estimates. The potential failure modes are then summed by the geometric means to determine the total annual probability of failure and the total average annual incremental economic cost. These values are used to calculate the weighted average incremental economic cost. As in the total incremental life safety risk, the worksheet uses the results to calculate for the results for reporting and plotting. A chart is generated showing the geometric mean of the potential failure modes, the non-breach risk, and order of magnitude total incremental risk. The chart allows for two options, all and none, to add reference lines from a dropdown in cell C41. We will finish off the levy SQRA worksheets with the total annual probability of inundation for NFIP accreditation recommendation. This sheet requires no user input, but it pulls information for the levy total incremental life risk and levy overtopping life risk worksheets. The calculated annual probability of inundation is used to determine the yes, no, and inconclusive recommendation as described previously. The total incremental life safety risk for dams worksheet is used to develop the incremental risk matrix and total risk for a dam. The sheet is similar to the total incremental life safety risk for levies worksheet, except that any overtopping failure mode should be included in this table, if applicable. Once the data is input, a chart is generated showing the geometric mean of the potential failure modes and order of magnitude total incremental risk. Likewise, the total incremental economic risk for dams worksheet is used to develop the incremental economic risk matrix and total economic risk for a dam. The worksheet is linked to the total incremental life safety risk for dams worksheet and must be completed after completing that worksheet. A chart is generated showing the geometric mean of the potential failure modes and order of magnitude total incremental economic risk. The dam hydrologic hazard stage frequency curve worksheet is used to determine the annual exceedance probability for a given loading condition in the dam non-breach life safety risk and dam non-breach economic risk worksheets. Before using the worksheet, the user must specify the elevation datum by choosing it from a drop-down list. The user should input the stage and corresponding annual exceedance probabilities from lowest stage to highest stage with a maximum of 95 points. Any of the 95 points which are not used should be left blank. The dam non-breach life safety risk worksheet is used to estimate the non-breach risk of the structure. The worksheet contains five steps. Prior to step one, the user must specify the elevation datum by choosing it from a drop-down list. Step one plots the estimated flood hazard using the data entered in the dam flood hazard worksheet. 
The right margin provides plotting options to adjust the X and Y axis and to add up to five user-defined horizontal reference elevation lines. Step two is to estimate the consequences. The user needs to determine the day and night consequence exposure weights, which correspond to the fraction of time for which a life loss estimate applies. Next, the user will need to fill in the table with data associated with the stage and non-breach life loss consequences using the yellow highlighted cells. The user must define the AEP where the non-breach life loss is zero. The MMC SOP assumes zero life loss at top of active storage. If better information is available to define the threshold for life-threatening releases, the user should enter this AEP such that stages are in ascending order. The user may enter up to three other events and consequences to define the curve. The worksheet uses the data entered in the consequence table to plot AEP versus average life loss. The plot options in the right margin allow the user to adjust the X and Y axis bounds. The vertical reference lines are referenced from step one. Note that if data is not available, then cells should be left blank. Step three estimates the non-breach risk. The data tables are generated from the data entered in step one and step two. No user input is required for this step. The data tables here will be used in step four. The worksheet uses the table to plot a stage versus average annual life loss non-breach graph. The user should ensure that the plot appears appropriate. The plot options in the right margin allow the user to adjust the X and Y bounds. The vertical reference lines are referenced from step one. In step four, the worksheet generates the plotting data and the plot for non-breach risk based on the information entered in the previous steps. No user input is required. This is the last step of the DAM non-breach life safety risk worksheet. The DAM non-breach economic risk worksheet contains five steps. Prior to step one, the user must specify the elevation datum by choosing it from a drop-down list. Step one plots the estimated flood hazard using the data entered in the DAM flood hazard worksheet. Similar to the other worksheet, step two is to estimate the consequences. The user will need to fill in the table with data associated with the stage and non-breach economic consequences using the yellow highlighted cells. The user must define the AEP where the non-breach economic cost is zero. The worksheet uses the data entered in the consequence table to plot AEP versus average economic cost. Note that if data is not available, then the cells should be left blank. Step three estimates the non-breach risk. The data tables are generated from the data entered in step one and step two. No user input is required for this step. The data tables will be used in step four. In step four, the worksheet generates the plotting data and the plot for non-breach economic risk based on the information entered in the previous steps. No user input is required. This is the last step of the DAM non-breach economic risk worksheet. The precise to order of magnitude estimate calculator was developed to assist the user in converting discrete estimates of annual probability of failure and consequences into order of magnitude estimates. The order of magnitude estimates of failure likelihood and consequences can be used during a team elicitation or as a check to ensure that data is being stated properly in this worksheet. The user inputs a precise probability estimate, life loss, or economic estimate, and the worksheet uses a visual basic function to determine the plotting position using the SQRA order of magnitude methodology. Risk matrix plots are generated based on the user input. That completes the general overview of the spreadsheet. Now we are going to walk through a guided example using the guided examples data tables, which are contained in the same spreadsheet as the exercises. Using the Module 7 Guided Exercise DAM data that was provided, we will enter the data into the appropriate worksheets. We will start with the Total Incremental Life Safety Risk for DAMS worksheet. Using the risk assessment data that was provided, enter a short failure mode description. Then using the drop-down menus, enter the corresponding APF and life loss data.
The worksheet will calculate the geometric mean of the range to determine point estimates, and then ranges for the total APF, the total average annual life loss, and the weighted incremental life loss. Here is the risk matrix showing the geometric mean of the potential failure modes and order of magnitude total incremental risk. Note the APF for PFM1A is below 1 times 10 to the minus 7 and plots beyond the limits of the chart. Next, we will complete the total incremental economic risk for dams worksheet by selecting the appropriate average economic cost for each potential failure mode. A matrix is generated showing the geometric mean of the potential failure modes and the order of magnitude total incremental economic risk. The Module 7 Guided Exercise DAM data provides the user with 89 rows of stage frequency data. We will copy that data and paste it as values into the DAM Hydrologic Hazard Stage Frequency Curve Worksheet. Note that the data was provided with stages ordered low to high. They must be ordered that way. Since the worksheet allows for 95 points and only 89 points were provided, the remaining rows are left blank. The dam non-breach life safety risk worksheet is the next step. Specify the elevation datum by choosing it from the drop-down list. Feet NAVD88 was used for the stage frequency curve, so we will use that same datum on this worksheet. Step 1 plots the estimated flood hazard using the data entered in the dam flood hazard worksheet. Step 2 is to estimate the consequences. We will need to determine consequent exposure weights based on the information provided. Since the exposure rate corresponds to the fraction of time for which a life loss estimate applies, we can simply convert the hours into a percentage of day, 10 over 24 or 0.42, and 14 over 24, 0.58. Next, the user will need to fill in the table with the data associated with the stage and non-breach life loss consequences using the yellow highlighted cells. Using the data provided, we enter the corresponding stage, AEP, and day and night non-breach life loss. Step 3 estimates and plots the non-breach risk. In Step 4, the worksheet generates the plotting data and the plot for the non-breach risk based on the information entered in the previous steps. The last worksheet to be completed in the guided exercise is the non-breach economic consequences worksheet, and it is completed in a similar fashion as the non-breach life loss worksheet. We specify the elevation datum and fill in the table with the data associated with the stage and non-breach economic consequences using the yellow highlighted cells. Step 3 estimates the non-breach economic risk. In Step 4, the worksheet generates the plotting data and the plot for non-breach economic risk based on the information entered in the previous steps. This completes the guided exercise using the SQRA Calx toolbox for a dam. Thank you for your attention. This concludes Module 7 of the course. Be sure to complete Homework 7 to get credit for completing the module. In Homework 7, you are given levy data for use in the RMC SQRA Calx toolbox. Use this data to develop the total incremental risk, overtopping incremental and non-breach risk, and the total mean annual probability of inundation of the levied area, and to provide an NFIP accreditation recommendation. Once complete, please send your completed homework to rmctraining at usace.army.mil with the subject as DLS 105 Homework 7 to help us keep track of submittals. Thanks in advance for your cooperation. If you have trouble with the homework, please reach out to the instructors through the RMC training email address on the screen or by emailing me directly. We will go over the solution to the homework assignment during the live question and answer portion, which will be in a few weeks. If you missed the live session, a recording will be posted to the RMC website. Please check the course schedule for dates and times. Thank you for your participation in this course.